Good morning, friends. The Lord is near. Those are Paul's words from Philippians chapter 4, verse 5. It's a great and comforting promise. It could mean one of two things. It might mean that the Lord is near in the sense of near in time, as when Jesus promises, I am coming soon. Our salvation is closer than when we first believed, because Jesus is returning. The gap between now and then is closing. Soon God and his people will be united in eternity. Or it could mean that the Lord is near in the sense of close to us. That's not a physical closeness, as Mary Magdalene learned on Easter Sunday, but a spiritual one, as when Jesus promised, I am with you always to the very end of the age. In the end, both senses combine, for our eternal hope is precisely that when Christ comes, we shall be with him face to face and forever. Even so, come Lord Jesus. And so for now, as we wait for Jesus' return, we depend on this promise. The Lord is near. That's the theme of the paragraph I've chosen for our final reflection from Psalm 119. And this morning we're going to look at verses 145 through to 152. You might want to pause and read those now. James says in chapter 4, verse 8 of his letter, Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. And this section of the psalm follows the logic of that verse. In the first few verses, 145 to 148, the psalmist encourages us to draw near to God. Listen to his description of his prayer life. I call with all my heart, answer me, O Lord, and I will obey your decrees. I call out to you, save me, and I will keep your statutes. I rise before dawn and cry for help. I have put my hope in your word. My eyes stay open through the watches of the night, that I may meditate on your promises. It's a searching description, isn't it? I call with all my heart. I call to you. I rise before dawn and cry for help through the watches of the night. Here is a believer who, like Jacob, will not let go of God until he is blessed. A few years ago, there was a fad for Christians to wear uh, bracelets with uh, various encouraging acronyms on them. Uh, I had the Afrikaans version uh, of the most famous one with WSJD, used to catch other Christians uh, trying to work out what it was for. What's so Yesu donke? Uh, with apologies to any South Africans watching this, uh, what would Jesus do? But another popular one read P-U-S-H, push, pray until something happens. Well, that's our psalmist. He's determined to wholeheartedly and persistently draw near to God. I wonder if that's a good description of your prayer life. Or do you find the old hymn convicts me? I find it often does. Oh, what peace we often forfeit, all because we do not take it to the Lord in prayer. Draw near to God, the psalmist urges us by his example. We need to learn discipline and to develop a single-mindedness to do that. And do you notice that our prayer warrior is saturated with scripture? He calls out to God and determines to obey he rises before dawn because his hope is in the word. He prays through the night, meditating on the promises of God. This is how to draw near to God, seeking the Lord with all our hearts, submersing ourselves in the commands and promises of the scriptures. And the result, verse 149 to 152, is that the Lord draws near to him, and so he will to us, as we learn to do likewise. Verse 149, hear my voice, in accordance with your love, preserve my life. Literally, as we saw earlier this week, quicken me, make me live, O Lord, according to your laws. The Lord doesn't hear our prayers because we're fervent. If that were true, the verse would read, hear my voice, in accordance with my love. No, fervour is important, but the Lord hears us because of his love for his people. Our confidence is always in him, not in ourselves. 
hear my voice in accordance with your love, he prays. He has promised to hear us, and it is the Lord's love that will bring him near when we come in faith. And he will give us life according to his law, the law that is fulfilled in Christ, the author of life. Now, he's not the only one who is near. Those who devise wicked schemes are near, but they are far from your law. As always, the affliction is close by, part of the psalmist's experience, even as he draws near to God. The Lord is closer than the wicked, closer even than the afflictions. Yet, verse 151, you are near, O Lord, and all your commands are true. The nearer life's threats are to us, the nearer still is the Lord. He is the friend who sticks closer than a brother. And this promise will never fail. Verse 152, long ago I learned from your statutes that you established them to last forever. This word will never wear out or fail. The Lord is near, and he will never depart from his people. That is an eternal promise. The Lord Jesus really is with us always to the very end of the age. He really is coming soon. So draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Let's pray. Father, give us, we pray, a fervent and believing heart, calling out to you, and abiding in your word of truth. Sanctify us, we pray, by the truth, drawing us near to you, that you also might be near to us. And come, Lord Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen.